Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. Tom Aspinall 14 and 3, 4 and 1 in his last five fights. The one loss is against Curtis Blades. Knee injury shouldn't be a win for Curtis Blades. Minus 400, I think is a little crazy. I don't think he's 4 to 1 better than Curtis Blades. 31 years old, 6'5 with a 78 inch reach. Fighting Curtis Blades, who's 18 and 4, also 4 and 1 in his last five fights. The one loss is against Sergey Pavlovich, where he fought like an absolute dum dum. Came back and he beat Jalton Almeida with hammer fist. Again, Jalton is a dum dum. Plus 310 underdog, 33 years old, 6'4 with an 80 inch reach, 1 inch in height for Tom Aspinall with a 2 inch reach for Curtis Blades. The interesting thing with this fight for me personally is how does Tom do when Curtis doesn't go away early? How does he do when Curtis is trying to get takedowns? As long as Curtis doesn't fight like, oh, wait. I was going to say like he typically does, which is what he's going to do is stand right in front of Tom Aspinall. I was going to say, if, if Curtis doesn't stand in front of him, then he can make this fight a lot better than a lot of people think. He, he really can. Now, do I think he can win? In some aspects, I think he could if he can get him down and control. Because we still don't really know how Tom Asmal's ground game is. Now, there's been, you know, he talked about what he would do to Pereira. He would, like, spear him, you know, get him down. Which, all right, if Alex knows that, he's just going to knee you, flying knee you. Um, but anyways, we're not talking about that. But Curtis Blades is so weird to me. Be, simply because of the fact that, you know, his chin's not good. Whether people are like, oh, he's fighting big punchers. Yeah, that's heavyweight. It's heavyweight. You still have to have a good chin. He doesn't. Tom Aspinall's faster. He has better strikes. He has a good ground game when he's on top. But we don't know how he is when he, if he gets taken down. We, we simply just don't know. You know, and a lot of people say Blaze was doing well in that first fight. It didn't last any time. So what are you, what are we taking away on that one? You know, but if you look at it, which we're gonna um, strikes landed per minute seven point seven two for Tom to three point five three for Blaze, so seven point two for for Aspinall. Land throws a very active striking accuracy sixty six to fifty absorbed two point seven seven to one point eight three, which is crazy. I think a lot of that is because Curtis goes down after some, so he doesn't absorb a lot. Defense is 66 to 59. Here's where it's interesting. Takedown average for 15 minutes, 3.46 to 5.72. Accuracy is 100 to 53. Defense is 100 to 31. Submissions, 1.7 to 0 for Blades. The problem is, is Blade uh, Espinal hasn't fought in, Who Who's the best guy that he's fought that has a, is a takedown guy? Who? Zero. Zero. Curtis Blades has fought this Tom Aspinall uh, guy a lot in his career. I mean, he's fought a lot of them. You know, like, um, oh, that's Tom. Why did I, what? Curtis Blades. He's fought a lot of those guys. You know, Chris Dawkins, a light-footed, fast, heavyweight, terrible guy. But, yeah, um, you know, junior Light on his feet, fast, even though he's well past his prime. Yes, I get that. But, again, Volkov, Rosenstruck, good striker, beat him by decision. Uh, Light-footed, Sergei, he's always super overrated. But, again, I, I, I like Tom Aspinall. I don't think he should be a 4-1 to one favorite. I think that's nuts. But he's faster. He is explosive. And if Blades doesn't move, like sometimes he doesn't do... Tom can win this fight fairly quickly. You know, I, I believe he has a couple first round finishes. I, I you know, think he has no dis, uh, decision wins, 14 finishes. He has 10, he has 13 first round finishes. And I think one of the only fights that's gone past, that's gone later in his career, is the uh, Andre Arlovsky fight. Let's see. Andre Arlovsky, rear naked choke, round number two. So his longest fight was Stuart Austin heel hook back in 2015. Since then, his longest fight has been Alexander Volkov, three minutes and 45 seconds, round number one. That's his longest fight. Now, you have to think also Curtis Blaze has fought better competition. You know, he's 13-4. He's 13-4, 0-1. Um, 
You know, he's fought Almeida, Pavlich, Dawkins, Rosenstruck, Lewis, Volkov, uh, Dos Santos, Shamil, Willis, Nganu, uh, Overeem, but even before he fought Francis the second time, Overeem, Hunt, Olenek, you know, Cody East, who's trash, piece of crap guy, uh, Nganu, in his first UFC, uh, uh, his first, um, what is it, his debut fight, which against Francis is crazy, back in 2016. But yeah, I like Tom. I think he gets the job done. But Curtis Blades is a sneaky pick. Subscribe, like, comment. Let me know you're picking. Peace.